So let's now talk about something which is related to space, private space, but we are not talking about SpaceX, we are talking about Blue Origin and the Mars Telecommunications Orbiter, MTO. It's going to be ready to support NASA missions in 2028. The MTO is built on the company's Blue Ring platform and is intended to support NASA's Mars Telecommunication Relay missions slated for 2028. So here are the key capabilities that we can also uh, well deduct from the few information that we know from the company's website. It's going to be a transformative telecommunication platform. So we are talking about telecoms and we're talking about the red planet. Uh, what you're going to see are all renders available on the website. It's going to be a ready to go platform to support, uh, again, telecommunication and the infrastructure around Mars. It's usually an underestimated field, something that people are not used to think about. You're always used to think about astronauts and people walking on the surface of the planet. But if you want a serious approach to not colonization, maybe uh, not yet, but even the would say basic exploration of a hostile environment, well, the infrastructure, what's around the main mission is of paramount importance. So we are talking about high speed con connectivity with continuous robust communication via multiple high rate links and also deployable ultra high frequency UHF relay satellites. So not a single satellite, but we are talking about a complete platform. Also, a, I would say decentralized one with multiple well, hardware, pieces of hardware in terms of satellites orbiting the planet. Hybrid propulsion is another key thing. So it's gonna be for, again, for what we know, it's gonna be a combination of solar electric plus chemical propulsion in order to allow expanded launch windows on, onto and towards Mars. Keep this in mind because we're gonna talk again about uh, the launch windows to the red planet. They are talking about, uh, with they, I mean Blue Origin, is talking about unmatched capacity in terms of the orbiter being capable of carrying over one metric ton of payload to Mars and to the orbit of the red planet, again, depending on the mission requirements. Powerful data, again, includes edge processing, data storage and artificial intelligence in order to expand the capabilities of future infrastructure. Again, uh, another thing that they are mentioning is uh, being launch agnostic. So compatibly with the new Glenn rocket and other five meter class fairing rockets, uh, the MTO is going to be um, compatible with a variety of launchers, not only from this company, Blue Origin, but also uh, by giving uh, metrics and dimensions gonna be uh, kind of standard in order to be compatible with basically uh, any other rocket of this cate of the category being capable of uh, uh, launching a payload towards this space, in particular to the red planet in this case. So the MTO is envisioned as a part uh, uh, of a longer term Mars infrastructure play it builds a prior on prior proposals like the Mars next generation relay Mars sample return architecture and is designed as a multi-use and enduring platform for high rate communication and also infrastructure services well um, the fact that you're gonna have a delay in the communication from when any information is transmitted to when that information is received is physics, is not something that uh, you can avoid uh, maybe only in the, ne in the next close future, but this is, a this is a thing. The fact that uh, on the other side, if you cannot minimize the delay time between the communication points, well, you can increase and you're going to increase a lot 
the band and also the width of this band and also the rate on which you are transmitting information towards our home planet. So a key strategic point is the fact that Blue Origin is emphasizing um, this much of their moon landing work and is also directly applicable and reusable for the red planet. So they are positioning DMTO as part of, the, of this efficient and also affordable transition. This is very important. So we have started talking about uh, uh, some key aspects of the thing. We talked about high speed connectivity. Let's talk about propulsion. So the spacecraft is built on a Blue Origins Blue Ring platform. But in terms of propulsion, this is gonna be um, hybrid in terms of a combination of a solar electric propulsion, such as the electric thrusters powered by the solar arrays, and chemical propulsion in terms of uh, what's um, defined as uh, traditional rockets to reach the red planet and insert into an orbit, uh, giving more flexibility in order in terms of launch windows. Well, the point is that you still need chemical propulsion to escape from Earth gravity. Um, we are gonna uh, go deeper into these concepts on our website spaceinfo.club and also in our free and premium courses. There is also, um, we are also talking about this thing, but let's um, decompose, the f uh, let's talk about this in simpler terms in order to escape from Earth gravity uh, or something similarly on other planets, nowadays you still need a trust over specific impulse. In, in this uh, scenario, this is far more important to have trust than specific impulse. This means that if you compute and compare different kind of propulsions, chemical ones are the only ones I want to underline nowadays the only ones capable of giving you the thrust ratio in terms of thrust over mass capable of escaping the gravity of our planet or any other planet you are lifting off from. So this is a need, not something that we are using because it's comfortable, but it's a physical need. Then when you are in space, you, you don't have to win gravity uh, in such a brutal way, you don't have to escape uh, the gravity of a planet. You are already coasting in a coasting. You are already in a coasting phase. Let's say from Earth to the Moon, from Earth to deep space or to Mars. Well, you don't need that amount of thrust ratio over mass, but uh, uh, well, having high specific impulse is enough and is preferable in terms of uh, um, propulsion efficiency. So you can switch from chemical propulsion to the like electric one. You're getting energy from the sun and you're converting that solar energy into electric, uh, electric propulsion. So you don't have much thrust in terms of thrust to mass ratio, you are not accelerating that much, but that acceleration is constant. And even if it's small, um, over a long period of time, like two, three, nine months, if you put a small but constant acceleration, 24 hours a day, well, you will obtain a significant amount of velocity already after, well, relatively uh, small amount of time. And this is very, very efficient in terms of uh, propulsion optimization, energy cost, and things like that. So there are different uh, uh, points on having one or the other propulsion system and if you have both you can choose and switch from uh, to the most efficient or most effective depending on what you need so also the use of solar electric help to well, supplement the launch energy so that the craft can reach mars even under challenging conditions and also you don't have to increase your mass just to uh, well get on board far more um, propellant quantity and mass consequently to
to coast from Earth to the Red Planet. Also, let's talk about the payload communication capability. Well, the orbiter is described as having over 1000 kilograms of payload capacity to Mars orbit, though depending on specific mission clearly. So uh, it's, uh, uh, it's more of an, indi an indication, more of a, well, a strategic symbolic number, but uh, this gives you an idea of uh, the importance of uh, how big this thing will be, not just uh, to be as big as impressive, but uh, to give you an idea of how much mass will be transportable by this thing. Also, the communication system will be multiple and uh, capable of uh, steering the high rate links between Earth and Mars. A broad beam of wide area coverage will be supplemented by a small number of deployable ultra high frequency relay satellites in low Mars orbit and as relay satellites will extend the coverage especially to legacy Mars assets or like landing sites for example and also the whole data infrastructure is going to be well designed to emphasize the edge processing the data storage and the artificial intelligence capabilities if this is well this is a clear trend and a positive one which is going to be followed by it, uh, by a lot of companies, small startups and also bigger ones uh, also around Earth. The fact that you are capable of processing data on board your craft while uh, conducting the computation, the observation, so you both have the acquisition of the data and the onboard processing which is uh, uh, based on edge, com edge computing, so to make it that simple, it's also decentralized on board of single satellites of a swarm of a of a constellation, and then the process the processed data are sent towards ground already processed. So you basically um, uh, reduce the computational efforts of centralized systems and you demand this computation on board locally on the satellites where the acquisition occurs. This is particularly efficient, efficient uh, under multiple points of view and this is a positive thing that is going to be adopted in this case. Then another very positive point is the fact that uh, it's gonna, the MTO is going to be launch vehicle agnostic. So uh, the orbiter is uh, again launch agnostic in the sense that it's compatible with the new Glenn and all, prob all the majority probably of the five meter diameter class fairing rockets so uh, Broaging is pushing uh, for its own heavy lift rocket but also uh, to be adaptable with respect to not uh, strictly speaking the competitors but generally speaking uh, uh, the launcher companies and the launchers more generally speaking. Also the platform, the Blue Ring platform is stated to be in production in a dedicated facility in Huntsville. Now let's talk about the mission timeline. The concept is designed to support a NASA Mars telecommunication relay mission aimed for 2028, so it's kind of close, and the MTO is pitched to be part of a long-term mass infrastructure approach not just as a one-off orbiter it's gonna be built on earlier proposal proposals like the mars next generation relay and also the mars sample return architecture and it's gonna be to be meant for repeated use future human and also robotics exploration so if some external commentary suggests that uh, while many details are public Many are still conceptual, so not necessarily secret, but conceptual, so very, very preliminary. So many uh, are not, uh, we don't have all the specifications, the exact, the exact Delta V budgets, the detailed antenna size and things like that. Probably don't, they, they themselves don't have yet. We still don't know what's the phase of development of this thing but it's interesting and it's on its way. So uh, also hybrid propulsion and the greater payload capability may be a fact. Blue Origin claims that the MTO is 
greatly expanding the windows to get to the red planet and it's also reducing the mission risk so well we are here to witness to the future maybe we are also here to take part in building this future and if you are interested in this last thing well explore the courses and get in touch on spaceinfo.club because uh, we are gonna connect you with some space professionals working in the field and uh, your dream of working in the space field is here to become true.